Joining me now is Sarah Sordom, a cattle producer from Schweitzer Ranch who also leads Calamus Outfitters, and Shelly Kelly, who is the executive director of the Sand Hills Task Force. Thank you both for being with us here today. Sarah, you're playing host to us today on your beautiful uh, ranch here in the Sand Hills of Nebraska. Give us just a quick overview of your operation, please. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, we're a multi-generational ranch here in the Sand Hills on the eastern side of, of the Sand Hills. Um, my family has uh, my parents and my brother and his family and my family are all here on the ranch together making a living and we're really proud of that fact. We've been here for over 100 years, but about 20 years ago we started a nature-based tourism business that also operates on the ranch. And you also serve on the Tourism Commission here in Nebraska, is that correct? Tell us a little bit about that and what draws people to the Sand Hills. Yeah, it was a real honor to be appointed to the State Tourism Commission. Uh, Nebraska is a really varied state that people often don't recognize. Um, but the Sand Hills in particular are so unique on a global level. You know, to have this native intact grassland, increasingly rare ecosystem for people to experience, as well as the wildlife that call it home. So it is a, a real draw, and especially in these times when people want wide open spaces and a little bit of room, you know, to spread out, it's the perfect place to come visit. And Shelley, speaking of those resources, the sand hills are, um, I'm always blown away by the beauty of them, but they're very vast. Um, they're really the largest intact grasslands really kind of left in the world. What work is being done to keep it that way and why is it so important? Honestly, ever since people settled the sand hills, they've been doing work to keep the sand hills intact. The only way you could make a living out here was to live off of the natural resources. Ranchers are the original conservationists, and so their livelihood truly depends on being able to manage the resources. To be able to keep the grassland intact, we need to graze. And to improve grazing management over time, we've seen the sand hills go from an active blowing set of sand dunes to a, a very tight, closed canopy grassland that's very healthy and productive. Because of the grazing management and the work of the ranchers and the stewardship, we've been able to keep the native species intact and largely in the same composition that they should be in. The cedar trees are coming in and are causing some problems, but people are adapting to be able to, to take care of those cedar trees. You mentioned the woody encroachment. Why is it such a threat? And then what's being done to, to sort of uh, address the issue? Uh, to be able to settle here, you had to plant trees. And so we've been planting trees. Nebraska is the home of Arbor Day. There's been such a campaign to plant trees that as you fly over the sand hills, you'll see the shelter belts all around. Calving, we need those. It's really important to have a little bit of a break from the wind now and again, because it is a wide open prairie. However, if those uh, windbreaks included cedar trees, those cedar trees are not staying in their neat little rows. They're now coming out into our pastures. And when you're planting a windbreak in a semi-arid environment, you want something that's drought tolerant, uh, very hardy, grows fast, and is very bushy. If you have a tree growing out in your grassland and it's drought tolerant, very hardy, and very bushy, and the cows aren't gonna eat it, it's not very helpful. And so we're seeing those trees come out of the windbreaks. We're seeing them come out of the, the rivers because of a lack of wildfire. We've reduced wildfire so much that now these, uh, fire intolerant trees are taking over our prairies. In my lifetime, I've seen um, the area from, from Sarah's place to my folks' place change dramatically, yeah. increase trees. Sarah, you've dealt with red cedars here on, on your own, own property. What are you and other landowners doing to combat this invasive species and why is it so important to keep the grasslands intact? So there's lots of different approaches and, and we do all of them, you know, um, if it's Big trees that are too big to cut by hand, we'll use you know, mechanical means to come in and get those trees cut down and pile them and burn those piles at a later date. If it's smaller trees, we still go out and try and do what we can by hand, um, especially in targeted areas, you know, um, high priority areas like next to a, a shelter belt or something like that where the seed source is most prevalent. On a more maintenance level, we do larger prescribed burns. And sometimes it's hard to make yourself like that match. <laughs> but after you see what happens after the burn and how great the grass looks and how you can still utilize it for your grazing, cattle love it, they perform well on it. So if you can just make yourself do it, our results have been really good. And burning for us has been the most economical means to get on top of our, our cedar problem. Well, again, thank you both so much for all the work that you're doing in this important issue. Thank you.